Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we've got this 2022 Chevy Equinox RS. Now the RS or Rally Sport in other packages, sorry, other vehicles such as the Blazer are actually a big difference. They change the suspension, they have the split dual clutch rear differential and here in the Equinox it's a trim package. So you get blacked out badges, you get some pretty nice looking 19 inch wheels, but the black roof rails, a bunch of stuff like that. You get a bunch of aesthetics. So this red trim on the seats, on the shifter. So you get some features like that, a little RS there. That's kind of what you get with this one. And you don't get any power upgrades or anything like that. No manual transmission. Every Equinox for 2022 is powered by this 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. And initially I thought it was pretty good. I still, I think it's all right. Um, it does kind of run out of power on the upper end. It has 170 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 203 foot-pounds of torque. And and that's down at like 3,500, I think it's says. Anyway, it's, it seems to do okay. It doesn't have a ton of turbo lag unless you're launching from a dead stop. And then when you're on the freeway, I actually didn't have any problems with it. It never downshifted or anything uh, because it has a six-speed auto and it's honestly geared a little bit lower. So at 70 miles an hour, you're above 2000 RPM by a bit and you're in the in the power range. So you're able to keep that speed without much issue. So overall, I've really liked driving it. It's surprisingly roomy. So inside it's quite a bit wider and we can take a look inside here. It was wider than I expected. And I only, I've been able to drive this vehicle for two days, so I don't have a ton of time in it. And what I didn't get to do that I wanted to try is put three car seats here. Because I know two will fit, no problem. But it's the third one that'll be a little bit tight. And I think I could actually do it in this. In a lot of smaller vehicles like this, I wouldn't be able to. But here in the Equinox, I think I could get all three car seats across there. And let's jump in the driver's seat. This one doesn't have fog lights or anything if you come out here. The headlights and everything, I think, blend in really well. I like this updated design for 2022. But down here, these are just uh, orange turn signals and the emergency lights, whatever, your four-way flashers, that kind of stuff. So they're not actual fog lights down there. And inside... <laughs> Like I talked about, there's the red stitching around. This one's pretty nicely equipped. Let's go ahead and start it up. Um, it does have heated seats and the heated steering wheel. Let me turn the fan off. There we go. Anyway, so you get a lot of nice features and it is the all wheel drive version. So just push that button right there. The all wheel drive will light up. All wheel drive mode is on. But like I said, it doesn't have a cool split dual clutch rear differential like the Blazer RS does. It's a little bit tight for the driver, which is fine for me. It fits me really well. Uh, the seat kind of hugs you on the sides a little bit. And if you have two big people here sharing the armrest, you're gonna be a little bit tight there. But for me, it's been great just driving around by myself. And the handling on this, it's surprisingly sporty. So I thought that was specific to the RS trim, but that, um, the RS actually doesn't change any of those, that stuff for you. So that's across the lineup. You should expect a pretty decently nimble vehicle. The turning radius is a little larger than I expected and the fuel mileage is a little worse than I expected, but this thing is brand new and I didn't reset it for my own. We can do that now and maybe I'll put a picture up when I'm done um with everything but overall this vehicle is 26.4 miles per gallon i was getting about 26 27 on the freeway that's 75 miles an hour and a little bit lower than that around town and the epa estimates i believe were 25 and 30. let's see if they have it on here 
25 city, 30 highway, and then 27 combined. So pretty close to the 27 combined, but for something this size, I mean, I guess it's a little bigger. I would expect maybe slightly better fuel mileage than that. Um, it does have plenty of features here. You can connect your phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that stuff. It's got all the stuff that you kind of expect in a modern vehicle. Auto stop start. It does have your adaptive cruise control and your lane departure warning. I like most other vehicles, I just didn't mess around with that. And then you have your auto high beams here on this side. And I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's for the fog lights, but this doesn't actually twist. Oh, that's just for the brights. There we go. I don't know what I was thinking there. Anyway, um, yeah, a lot of plenty of standard features in here. There's a lot of stuff in here that's nice to have and comes with the RS trim. And it's pretty well equipped. It does have a ton of power ports. So you have a USB-C, regular USB-A, 12 volt there, the SD card, and in here, two more USB-C's. So up front, you've got four charging ports, five if you count the 12 volt, so four USBs. And yeah, decent amount of capability for charging devices and stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look in the second row. I didn't look up here on top or didn't show you guys. It does have sunglass holder and see how thick that is. That'll fit a pretty normal pair of sunglasses. You don't have to have AV aviators. You can put something else in there like my Tifosi Jets. It does have this right here, which I doubt you can see, but I was turning right, traffic and straight in front of me was stopped, but the right turn lane was open. So I was kind of going fast and it popped up here. You could see it reflecting on the windshield, a bunch of red lights saying, watch out, you're gonna crash into that car. Um, I don't know how effective those systems are. If you're actually gonna crash, like they seem to activate too late, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, they must, they must work, but you know, if you're distracted looking away and that starts beeping, you're gonna look up. By the time you look up and realize you have to hit your brakes, I think you're gonna be crashed into something. So that's not my favorite feature to have on a vehicle, but yeah, but for some people, maybe it does make the difference. Here's the rear hatch and you can adjust. You can turn it off entirely. You can set it to open to different heights right there. Here in the rear seat, you get a lot more charging again there's two more ports here and a 110 good you can see that there down there sorry it's a 120 volt 150 watt uh, outlet down there and again it's pretty roomy so here second row it's pretty roomy you've got cup holders here plenty of space i actually feel like there's more space in this seat than there is in the driver's seat but it doesn't hold on to me as good on the side so it, you know when you're doing sporty driving you're going to slide more in these seats it does have the child seat anchors and there's not one here in the middle you can use this one and that one for that and of course the seats do fold so you can get a flat load floor and the cargo room's decent i would say it's it's big enough um, and it's not hard to fold the seat. Sometimes to fold the seats, you gotta pop the headrest all the way down in or take it out or whatever you need to do. On these, not so. Back here, you can also fold the seats from this one. Uh, that one's kind of jammed. Oh, uh, cable's not working there. You should be able to fold the seat from there. Um, anyway. Uh, it was a little bit jammed up and then here you can take this cover all the way off but it fits really tight in there so i'm only going to show you back here and it goes back in there a little ways and then as you can see the shape here there is a spare tire underneath there and it's these little tabs kind of hold it in place so it's better two-handed so there we go anyway spare tire down there and if you're gonna carry like a tow strap jumper cables i don't know there's a little bit of room under there for some of those types of things as well. So there's a decent amount of storage underneath. And if you were to get the sunshade, it would be stored 
here across right there is where you would store that this one doesn't have it and then of course it pops in up here on these so there's actually a decent amount of space if you were to sleep in here it wouldn't be the most comfortable thing but you could lay diagonally across there for someone average height you may have to curl your knees up a little bit but not too much on this side a 12 volt power outlet and that's all for the outlets in the back and they're just a fuse block and it does have a hitch behind this cover i'm not going to pop it off right now because this one is one of the ones that's a little bit harder to do but it is there it can tell like 1500 pounds so not a lot power closing door of course the equinox rs all-wheel drive version is pretty darn nice it's got a 1.5 liter four-cylinder turbo and you don't notice a ton of turbo lag if you're going full throttle from a stop you'll notice it but the rest of the time it's not that much and compared to a few other engines that chevy has that are turbocharged this one just seems to respond so much better uh, at least in the mid to upper rpm range just when you're above like 2000 you don't notice it at all really and then uh, below 2000 rpm you'll notice a little bit anyway uh, on the road it's really pretty darn quiet and you know on the freeway it's easy to keep speed it never really downshifts it's only got a six speed auto which is plenty i shouldn't say only but it does mean that you sit at a little bit higher rpm which maybe it burns a tiny bit more fuel that way but it's much more responsive at freeway speeds because it's up there in the range where the turbo is actually kicking in and giving you power and the gas mileage i've been getting on this is maybe not quite as good as it could be in other vehicles but um, 26 and a half i've been a little bit below that 26 and a half is the overall for the last 1300 miles and it only has 1400 miles on it so uh, my current instant is 27 28 there you go right in that range but around town i certainly uh, don't get quite that good and even on the freeway for the most part i'm right there around 26 27 so not bad on fuel mileage but for something this size and a 1.5 liter four cylinder, you would maybe expect a little bit more, a little bit better fuel mileage than that. It's pretty quiet inside. I do get some wind noise, but it seems like it's mostly just from the front. Like I don't hardly hear anything from the back seats at all. And the handling's good. We'll go through the S-curves. Here we are at the S-curves. gone faster through that this thing remains pretty planted it's flat in the corners flat-ish I mean it leans a little bit but it's really quite flat and I'm surprised at how well it sticks because these tires are not that big but man that thing grabs and goes through the corners pretty well and stays pretty flat and the surprising part is the ride's not that rough so it handles pretty well but it doesn't really have that stiff of a ride Okay, we're gonna do the zero to 60 now. And three, two, one, go. Turbo lag up to about 2,000 and maybe 2,500 RPM. 60. That one was 9.46 seconds. Yeah, not a lot to say about this thing overall. It's, uh, I don't know what to say. It's not astounding. It's not remarkable. It doesn't stand out from the pack with any certain feature. Overall, it's a great vehicle. It handles really well. It's surprisingly sporty. I wasn't expecting it to be that sporty, and I wasn't expecting it to be that roomy in the second row. 
So I think that it does have a lot of features. You get a lot of the standard features that are, you know, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the navigation that you can run through those, you know, the bigger screen, all that kind of stuff. Pretty good sound system. All that kind of stuff you get included with it, with the RS package. It's just overall kind of a great little package with nothing that stands out, but you don't need that. I mean, some people want it and they'll want a different vehicle, but if you don't want to stand out, uh, as far as having the coolest new tech or I don't know, whatever it may be. This vehicle is, is an excellent vehicle for that. It drives great. And all, on the on-road portion, I did say oh, plenty of power and that kind of stuff. It does run out of breath. The 060 was like nine and a half seconds. Uh, it just getting up to that first 2,500 RPM before it really, the turbo really kicks in, it takes off, uh, it takes a second. And then even at full throttle, once you're 5,000 RPM, it's 6,000, I guess, 5,500 in that range. I don't know. It kind of dives off at the top. It gets the peak horsepower like 5,400 RPM, but it, it seems like it's diving off near the top end. Uh, just, I don't know. It's kind of a weird power range because it, you don't get the power till later, but then it runs out of power before it really gets up there in the RPM range. Um, fuel mileage, eh, could be a little bit better, but it's not terrible. Again, the vehicle was a little bigger than I expected, so uh, maybe that offsets the, the fuel mileage. And honestly, it's not that big of a difference. If you want to hyper-mile it, drive 65 on the freeway, you'll get over 30 miles per gallon, I'm sure. So if you liked what you saw, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below. If you didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, be sure to comment down below and let me know why. If there's some stuff you want to see, different tests you want to see, whatever, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.